Joining us now is the Labour MP, Roshana Ali, who's chair of the all-party group on Burma, and she also recently met Rohingya refugees in Bangladeshi camps. She joins us now from Westminster. Good to talk to you. Where do you think these refugees should go? Well, first of all, I think that any attempt to repatriate the uh, Rohingya refugees from Bangladesh has to be backed by security. And as the Select Committee has highlighted, and as others have said, that is not the case. What's going to happen is that they're effectively going to be sent back to camps. Um, that's what I saw in Rakhine State when I visited uh, twice uh, visited Rakhine State, where people are kept almost in the form of apartheid um, in those camps. So without a UN-mandated security provision and protection of their rights and access to their homes and their land, it would be fundamentally flawed to try and um, have this repatriation process. How long then do you think, and is it indeed even possible, to, to get all these steps in place to allow them to return? Well, what we need is an, a concerted international effort to hold the Burmese military to account to make sure that the government of Burma are able to face up to what they have done and also ensure that there's proper humanitarian assistance um, for those who are currently in Bangladesh, uh, because obviously Bangladesh is bearing the brunt of now a million refugees there, and a billion pounds is what it costs to provide for them annually. Um, but it requires international action. It requires requires um, the Burmese military to be held to account because what we've seen is ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity taking place. How likely is it that, that you think we could get this, this international effort or that we could indeed get the Burmese government to change their mind given that they won't even uh, use the word Rohingya on any documents? Well, well, this is why the repatriation process is problematic, because until uh, action is taken for the Burmese military to recognise their responsibility and what's happened, uh, we are likely to be uh, forcing people effectively to return to further danger when they've already lost their... Uh, many of them have lost family members who've been killed and women who face rape um, and other forms of attacks. The Bangladeshi government believes that these people need to be sent back to Burma so that they can fight for their independence, so that they can fight their corner, as it were. Uh, can you understand that, 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 that Bangladesh, who's had these refugees for many, many years, thinks that this is the best solution? Well, I can understand why the Bangladeshi government would want to see the repatriation to, taking place, but it has to be done with the humanitarian interests of those who are affected. Otherwise, we will face a double catastrophe, and I don't think that it would be good for the image of, the, uh, of Bangladesh to be presiding over uh, the repatriation of people who could face further, um, further danger to their lives. That's what they've escaped. So I think it's really important that the government of Bangladesh receives more support, both in the form of humanitarian assistance but also support uh, from the international community to, so that the international community applies the correct pressure on the Burmese civilian and military backed government so that their actions are, uh, um, are further action and further persecution of the Rohingya minority is uh, stopped because otherwise we're going to see these cycles of violence continue and I can see and understand why the government of Bangladesh doesn't want to see that continue but at the same time we need them to work closely closely with the international community and make sure that people are not being returned to the perpetrators of the violence, of the killings, because that would be a double catastrophe on top of what's already happened. Okay. Roshanara Ali, good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.